If you look at Lincoln in the summer of 1858, he is opposed to the extension of slavery, basically because it is, um, it is just unfair. It's unfair to white working people. It's, it's, um, it perverts the intention of the Declaration of Independence. And as Lincoln says, um, everyone has the right to eat the bread that he or she makes with his or her own hands. But he's not there yet right. on any semblance of equality. He says, you know, I don't want to marry with black people. I don't want them to serve as jurors. If anyone has to occupy the inferior place, it should be them and not, quote, us. Right. The movement that he exhibits in three and a half years yeah. is truly extraordinary. And I think one of the reasons is, and I think it was, it was dramatized beautifully on these boards a few weeks ago when you opened the play about Lincoln and Frederick Douglass, is that Lincoln really had no relationship with people of color, except servants, his barber in Springfield, who was Caribbean. He didn't know black people. He saw an issue, but he didn't have any empathy, any personal empathy. When he comes to Washington, he meets different people. Right. He meets Sojourner <clears throat> Truth. He meets Frederick Douglass. Again, that was what was dramatized here. And there is a world that opens up to him, and he begins to see equality not just as a, 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 something that the Declaration promises, but as something that can affect four million people and change the country. And I think it's so emblematic of leadership. What Lincoln said was, first, I now think, which I didn't think before, and I'm paraphrasing, I'm now going to go down in history not as the person who led a victorious army, but as the liberator of a race. He, he came to understand that. And the other thing was that Lincoln didn't just say, I'll stick with the emancipation and lose the election, fine with me, because it wasn't fine with him. He had the other quality, we're talking about political skill. He said to himself, essentially, I think I've got the ability to explain to Democrats who are skeptical about the emancipation why it's actually a good thing. And the argument he made was when I unveiled the emancipation last year, 100,000 or more African Americans came from the South to the North. They're working in our union war effort. If I canceled it, they might stop working. Some of them might go back to the South. We might lose the war. So he was able to make that conservative argument in the same way that Kennedy did on civil rights. And I do think you have to ask if you are commander in chief, although we're all proper about these things and say we'd all do the right things. You have to answer to history if you fail to do something because of your own ethics or your own particularness about the law. You have to judge when you are president and extremist whether you will take the steps that you will be corrected for later. But you know, if you don't take them, you can't explain them later to history and say, well, I wanted to obey, obey the law, so I cost the lives of a million people. Sure. No, or, or you, have to make the comp you have to make the balancing act between the law as you're told to, inf to enforce it, and what you know is in your deepest conscience is best for the country. And it is your job. You are not above the law because you will have to face it at some point, but it is leadership, and it is very morally tricky to get out there on that edge. But you're there. I don't think that leadership and political acumen are mutually exclusive. At least it wasn't in Lincoln's case. Um, nor was it impossible for him to explain his metamorphosis from someone just interested in limiting the spread of slavery to someone who was committed to its abolition. The, 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 just as Kennedy didn't live to see the 64 Civil Rights Bill, Lincoln, of course, didn't live to see the 13th Amendment ratified. But he was absolutely relentless, inexhaustible, creative, a little bit under the table in rounding up the, is it two-thirds you need in the House and Senate before it goes to the states?